Welcome to the re-relaunch of our Mixing Light interview series. I'm pleased to introduce a new Mixing Light contributor, Callie Bateman, to our roster. Callie will lead this interview series format, but other contributors may also jump in. Mixing Light members, you'll get the video version through our website while we will make this podcast free through a podcatcher at podcast.mixinglight.com. Remember, we are 100% supported by our members. If you like this content, the best way of making sure it keeps flowing is by becoming a member and supporting our contributors. First up for Callie, she interviews a mentor of hers, Vincent Taylor. Vincent is a cinematographer turned colorist. He's won a dozen awards from the Australian Cinematographers Society. Then he got into color grading through Telecine, which is film scanning for our younger listeners, at a company that eventually joined Deluxe. I'll let Callie take the rest from here. Me, I'm the co-founder and owner of Mix and Light, Patrick Inhofer. We can't wait to bring you more of Callie and this Mixing Light interview series. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. I'm Kaylee Bateman for Mixing Light, and today I'm here talking to veteran colorist Vincent Taylor, who's had an incredible career spanning nearly every city in Australia and multiple countries and multiple decades, being very successful in many markets. So I just want to say welcome and thank you very, very much for taking the time to have a chat with me today. Absolutely. My pleasure. I think I think the words veteran and decades, it starts to kind of hurt a little bit, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the gravitas of yeah, the experience yeah. is what we're trying to convey. I was fortunate to spend a bit of time assisting you in my infancy as a colorist and you were an exceptional a very generous teacher, and I've followed your progress um, throughout the the world, literally, um, with with great admiration as you've gone. So, um, just in terms of talking about all of the amazing places that you've worked, so we worked together in Melbourne, mm. um, but prior to that, you'd worked in Brisbane and Sydney as well, and then you worked in Shanghai as head of colour at NPC. Shanghai. And then you went over to New York to work as a head of colour in New York, yep. which is no small feat. And now you're in LA. Have I missed anywhere? Well, we can throw Auckland into the mix as well. Is there, oh my is goodness, there a couple of times? Of you know. Can you tell me a little bit about how you've gone moving yourself, your family and your career around so many different places? I think the, the knee-jerk response is, uh, is, yeah, it has been great. Um I mean, I, I can't imagine n not having done that. Uh, it's It wasn't necessarily the, the intention. I'd been working for, you know, uh, like a, a reasonably sized post house in Melbourne for, for quite a while and used to that format. And then uh, things changed and, and, and I ended up freelancing. And as far as I know, I, I was the first freelancer in, in Melbourne for about, I think, just shy of two years. Um, and it was, yeah, I was busy because there was the, no one else was freelancing, you know. I think I got a taste of of working in different places as a result of that, and quite liked that that change of uh, uh, not just equipment, but with different people and you know different setups, different rooms. And off the back of that, uh, a friend of mine who I used to work with in Sydney, uh, who was then working for Technicolor in Shanghai, kind of said, "Oh, could you come over and freelance?" And I think it was about. I want to say five weeks or something. It was it was a decent stretch. But I said, yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. And it was. It was amazing. And off the back of that then, he said, look, actually, would you be interested in, in staying on? And uh, I, I kind of laughed and said, well, no, I've got, I've got a two-year-old kid and my wife's got a you know pretty pretty good job. And, and that night on Skype, I'd, I'd call my wife up and go, oh, you'll never guess what they asked me, asked me to stay on, you know. And she said... Oh, why don't why don't we why don't we do that? Wouldn't what, what? So she she is much more adventurous than I am, and so I went. Oh, all right, you know. So uh, uh, and didn't look back really. So we were there for three years, and then we didn't know. We we knew that three years was probably enough at that time for Shanghai. It, it, it's an amazing city, but it was it was, you know, it was pretty merciless. It kept going and going. It was a lot of work, and then 
when we were trying to work out what to do, because we thought, oh, I don't know if we're ready to go back to Australia, then uh, some people reached out to me who were who just set up in New York and uh, offered me something there. I mean, I've heard from colleagues of yours over in Shanghai just what a fun person in the suite you were. I've heard stories of you dressing up in pyjamas with your uh, clients, you know, all wearing matching pyjamas in the Mm. suite and doing very long hours. And um, you've always definitely been that very personable person who takes a lot of fun and a lot of energy with you wherever you go. So I'm sure in that sense, when you're tucked away in your little suite, Suite, it probably um, just it's just home in a way as well. So wherever that suite is, you're I'm sure you're home. I know I'm putting words in your mouth there, but no, but it's um, true. You, you you know me, you, and and the, and that is true. You know, I think uh, um, like that excitement. Like I'm I'm really excited to do my job most of the time. You know, I I, I feel very lucky. It's been I, I don't know how long I've been grading for a long time now, but um, you know it, it's still really interesting and exciting to me. Um, occasionally, I've, I've noticed the last few years, and it's probably more related to pandemic and remote grading and all the rest of it. Occasionally, you feel I think a little more tired out, but but then you jump onto another job that's that that ticks all the boxes and you, you, and off you go again. And tell me a little bit about those boxes that you mentioned. So what are the ideal jobs for you? Is it client-based? Is it your know, combination of client-based and content? Hmm. I think, I think all of the above, but, but content, yes, absolutely. If, there, if there's no integrity in the work at all, uh, it doesn't matter how good the people are or how good the gear is or how good the pay is or, you know, it, it, after a while. Well, for me anyway, I, I get restless pretty quickly. Um, uh, and, and actually that was part of the motivation to leave Shanghai is because not because the work wasn't good. It was amazing. And I worked on great, great things. But in Australia, I, I was really lucky. I had this balance between doing long form and short form work. Whereas in China, I was just doing commercial work only for three years. Mm. And so by the end of that, I was, I was going, I, I need to break this up or I'm going to go nuts. So while you were working in Shanghai on those commercials, you did some pretty amazing work. You did work for Bentley, BMW, Mercedes, L'Oreal, Coca-Cola. Like that's, that's an incredible kind of um, output and incredibly high end work and very, I'm sure, quite detailed grades. Um, so tell me about moving from commercials at that level to long form. Well, it's 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 interesting because, um, and it's 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 a hot topic right now uh, where I'm working because they are predominantly a long form company. They do commercials as well, but they do a, they've got a lot of long form colorists, and and I think it's been you know it's been challenging to to kind of then try to sell me back into long form even though I've done long form because I've had such a long stint at doing commercials that it's it's been you know slowly moving and almost like recreating my career which is so bizarre it's just it's just yeah it's just giving people the confidence to go oh I don't know if he can do long form and it's like I I, I can do it I promise uh but you know bit by bit those um those wheels are starting to turn again and and there's there's more projects coming in but but it's it's interesting like even after a long career and even with a background of both it's you can very quickly get you know pigeonholed in, into into the type of colorist you are. I'm just speaking from my own experience now. It feels like things that you learn in long form make you a better commercials colorist, and things that you learn in commercials make you a better long form colorist. And um, especially in Australia at the moment, I'm mm. seeing the walls come down between those two areas a lot, and some very beautiful long form work coming out of some incredible previously commercials only colorists in Sydney in particular. Um, So I just wanted to understand what you've found, you've been able to take from commercials and give back to commercials and that sort of thing. I think think any creative endeavour benefits from restraint. Uh, And and if you're working on commercials, uh, you have a whole lot of awesome things to play with, like very often you've got more 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 time to spend on a very short amount of you know media like a 30 second or a 90 second commercial you know you might have a whole day or or, or 
you know, in the case of Shanghai, almost a whole week. Um, but wow. uh, yeah, yeah. But but that's another story. Um, uh, and and then you know you've been doing that for a while, and then you move into long form, and you find that you're you know you, you approach it with those. I'm trying to fight the word shackles, but uh, but it is a shackle in a way because you, it, it's this restraint. And then it, it makes you craft the image very differently because you've been doing that for so long. Um, and that's got pros and cons. But generally, it does make you better because then, then after a day or two in, back in long form, you go, oh, hang on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I've got this. This is a different, you know, and then your, your, your brain changes. But you take all the good things that you're doing on commercials and you can bring them across into, into long form. And then vice versa, you know, you, you sort of um, – in fact, a practical example of that is, you know, you've been, you've been working on long form and you come into a commercial and you're, you're much more, or at least I am, much more inclined to do it as a series of passes, uh, you know, and, and instead of getting locked into a couple of shots. Uh, and very often that's educating clients as well. You know, they'll go, well, let's just, can we just take the, the light off the glasses and, and you go, and, you know, so very quickly you go, yep, no problem. I'll put that in the notes. I'll come back. But you but you start crafting the whole piece as if it was a long form project, you know, beginning to end, beginning to end. And then, okay, does that play through? And the very obvious thing, continuity, does it work? Yeah, it works. Okay. Right. Now, what were you saying about the glasses? Okay. Let's go back and look at that now. And, and mm. you know, and so you, you start, you start breaking down the project in a very different way than maybe, I mean, perhaps everyone does break it down that way, but I never used to with commercials. Mm. I, I often used I to exactly just burrow I mean. down, you know, and just kind of... I know exactly what you mean. And I think it's also client-driven to a certain extent as oh, well yeah. because they almost want it done before it started yeah. because I think there's a bit of nervousness uh, often with agencies that they're going to actually see on screen what they've invested this time and what they've sold to their totally. clients. And they want to burrow into all of the nitty-gritty secondaries before they've done the primaries, and that is no way to work. So, well, um, well, I had, I had, guide them. I did have a situation though. Uh, this is last year. Um, it was exactly that that scenario, and uh, and I and I kind of said to the client, I said, "Listen, I, let's let's just get the overall in place first. All right, let's just get." And he goes, "No." And I said, I'm sorry, "Excuse me," and he goes, "No, that's." He said, "That's that's that's not the way I work," and I went, "Oh, oh, okay," and you know, and so and so we so we did it his way, where we did burrow down, burrow down, burrow down, burrow down, burrow down, and of course, what happens is you spend, and in this case, it was extreme, maybe three hours on a shot. Wow. And then and then I and I finally kind of say, look, it's really time to move on. And then finally the producer goes, yeah, maybe that is a good idea. Maybe we should move on. <laughs> um, and then, of course, all of those shapes and windows and mm. layers that you did, you get to the next shot and you go, how the heck am I going to, mm. you know, it's, it, and, and of course we were there for, I can't remember, but it was pretty ridiculous. And then afterwards they're, they're saying, why did that take so long? And you're going, well... It was not, it was not <laughs> ideal, but the but the but the client was very strong willed. He said no, that's yeah. not that's not the way I work. And you go, yeah, okay. What we need to do is to be able to express well. You know, you're here to work with me. Mm. This is how I work, but it doesn't work with every client, of course. No, Some of them are just no, it, too. It does Realize I'm not going to win that fight, and so you can't have it. <laughs> I th you know what I think. I think that's definitely something that comes with experience. Is 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 knowing when to fight it and when to just go. Ah, all right. You want to do it that way? Yeah. That's that's yeah, that's, we're that, do it your that's way. fine. <laughs> the, the, the only the the, the latter. Um, response though always kind of saddens me because it's like yeah. uh, for me anyway I'm going oh man you would have got so much more out of my skill mm. if you would just let me do my job do, do what I do every That's day right. you know but That's right. and I think in a way like that that is also a very big difference between commercials and long form is that you arrive to do a commercial and you're seeing the footage for the first time and you haven't necessarily met the client and you don't really know exactly what the vibe is going to be and you might have half an hour to get your head into it before the client walks in and then it's on. Whereas in my experience with long form, yes. there's much more testing, there's much more understanding of how things are going to be achieved and you're integrated into the process a lot earlier and you are hopefully going into the grade with a good understanding of what, what everyone's after. And you may even get a day or so to get some of those nuts and bolts mm. into place before 
the people descend on you and um it's and, it's and it's, it's absolutely tr- it's absolutely true and the, and there's also that that bizarre thing of actually doing tests you know before yeah which is yeah. so amazing you know I, I i had a um i'm doing a job later this month and it's just a, this little short film but it's a guy i've worked with a f- quite a few times now and um and he's one of those people who goes okay what do you want to do he's saying to me what do you want to do? And I'm going, well, what are, you, what are we trying to do? And then you start, it's back and forth and it's so much fun. Uh, but but he, he called me up in October last year and sort of said, I'm doing this film. Here's the script. Here's our idea. They haven't even shot yet and they're talking to the colorist. Now, that, it, used, it used to be like that many, many, many years ago, you know, where, where you'd get DPs who would just call up and say, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing the thing. Sound good? And nine times out of ten, you go, "Yep, do, just do your stuff," you know. But uh, but in this instance, you know, it's a it's a very uh, dark content, and uh, and and I said to him, I said, "I know what you want to do. You want this to be, to be look quite literally very very dark." He goes, "Yeah, I do, I do." I said, "All right, well, you and the D- DP have to behave." You know, give, <laughs> give, 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 just give, just whatever you're going to do, back it off a little bit so I've got a bit more, I can always darken it down again for you. But, and, he, and he said, good point, good call, all right. You know, and so, you know, so hopefully they'll, they'll just open up those shadows a little bit more and give me a bit more information uh, if, if needed. Yeah. So, but, but how much yeah. fun, you know, to have that yeah. conversation. And, and we were talking about this 10 minutes ago about, you know, what, that that excitement in the room and i get so yeah. excited when you're actually working with people like that yeah. it's satisfying for everyone you know absolutely when you can get on the same wavelength and you get that flow on yeah. there's nothing better yeah nothing better well speaking of particular projects i wanted to talk to you about tiger king season two <laughs> yeah that was such a beautiful grade i have to say um i don't actually remember the look of season one because it was so shocking i think i was more focused on my goodness what is going on with these people and what a dream for the producers to find these characters oh, I know. Um, but season two I was struck by how good it looked and I just wanted to talk to you about your process what it's like to to grade a second series of something that is so incredibly popular and um, whether or not you felt any pressure going into that there's there's a lot of parts to this answer because um, uh, uh, I'd been working uh, for a company in New York and then that was finishing up and I was going to start with Harbour, who did Tiger King. And um, I'd been working on, uh, on Baselight, grading with Baselight for about, I think, two years. And then jumping into Tiger King, it was back to Resolve again. Oh, wow. Um, uh, so so, so there's, one, there's one thread. I'm going, oh, okay, Resolve, I've got to remember how to do that. <laughs> And then, then the other part, yes, it was it was taking over from a colorist who had done season one, uh, who is a ridiculously lovely, lovely human being, uh, Roman at at Harbour, and um, I was very anxious about meeting him and you know talking talking with him because he's he's just incredible in his own right, uh, but then also taking over from him and, and being able to you know recreate what he did. Um, but he was just so like within five minutes you go, oh, this is going to be great because you, because <laughs> y- y- he's the sort of person you could say, but why did you do that? Or why did you do this? And he'll either go, oh, I did this because that, or he'll just go, oh, I don't know. You know, so, so like, <laughs> so he's very, very honest and very generous and, you know, so he basically, uh, had gone through and said, look, uh, we've been given a lot of the interview interviews already. He said, I've gone through maybe 20% of them and just kind of put looks on them very similar to what we did last time. And some are even in the same environment. He said, so look, use that as a jumping off point. Um, He also had a node structure uh, that he had created for the show. So on one hand, that was good. Because then I went, great, I'll just use that. On the other hand, it, it, sometimes it was, I went, oh, hang on. And, and I really ended up messing up his node structures and making them look ugly as all heck. Um, but, you know, between, between conversations with him, looking at the previous series, and then, uh, you know, it was, it was really well shot, um, the, the interviews and everything that they did. And the rest was archival. So you could only do what you could possibly do to make that look right, you know. 
Um, mm. And so, and then I think it was halfway through episode two, and I was still a bit anxious about, you know, and then Roman kind of came in and had a look, and I said, look, I was doing this and doing that, because this didn't quite work or, or whatever. And he goes, yeah, yeah, no, it's yours now, go for it. And he just said it in such a light way. He goes, no, 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 you're doing great. Just do, you be you, you know. And that kind of went, made me go, oh, oh, okay. And then, then I was off. I was off to the races, right. you know. So, um, but you, you almost needed that permission. Yeah, because it was somebody else's, yeah. The project to you. Yeah, that way. yeah, it, it was. And, and, and you know, it, it had, you know, a lot of people had seen it. So you, yeah. you didn't want to <laughs> totally mess it up. The, the clients on that were just so lovely. They were just, you know, uh, uh, very specific about what they wanted, but articulated it really perfectly and then said, there you go, and didn't kind of hover around, knew that I was going to just get on with that and, you know, and would come back with a handful of notes and then we'd be on to the next one. So um, it was a really good experience, but it, it, it fucked me up going back to Resolve. By the end of the series, I was, I was going, all right. I got it. I'm back into it, <laughs> and then I and then I was onto another film that was back on baseline again. So I was ruined. I was oh like, goodness. yeah, yeah. It just I'm not, I'm not I'm I don't, do not have a big enough brain that can just go no problem, no problem. It's for me, it's all or nothing, and I and I kind of you know. <laughs> Um, That's wild. I mean, you wouldn't know from looking at it that you were dusting off some software that you hadn't used. For don't t- a don't t- of don't years. tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't, yeah. um, it, it was just stunning. And what I some of the things that I really enjoyed about watching Tiger King season two was um, the Dolby Vision. So I was watching it on my LG and watching oh, it in Dolby good. Vision. And <clears throat> what I really loved about your treatment of that was that the highlights didn't feel like they were poking through into another universe. Like you really had them sitting at a comfortable level. Mm. Um, What was that like for you? Was that something that had been set up in the first series that you were then working with those parameters? Was the first series Dolby Vision? Or did you shape that curve yourself to what felt right for you? The at the end of the day it 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 still came down to you know you you got your scopes and you got your but you, you know you still did it by eye you still did oh that looks right it doesn't feel too over the top all of that said um you know i've i've been so spoiled especially at harbor they've got you know their own color scientists they've got you know so so you can run everything by them and just go look i'm sitting in here i think that feels right this one you know and then and it was great because i had the two monitors so i'd done my i'd done my sd pass or did I do the other way around i'd suspect so like well you, yeah, yeah but you'd, you'd say there. you'd say that but there's been a couple projects where it it, it did flip where they went, no, 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 yeah, right. we've, we've got to get the SD out for Because, yeah, common sense is HD first and then do your trim pass. And I think that's what it was for Tiger King as well. There was a few kind of things to watch out for, but generally it was just like, no, oh, that feels right. It's not too you, – you don't want to hit people over the head with it, you know. No, and, and you really didn't. <clears throat> like I wouldn't – just looking at it, just eyeballing it, I wouldn't have thought you even got up to 600 nits, you know. It no, very, ba- barely. Very restrained and, to me, just tasteful. Um, yeah, well, you, you, great. but you've actually reminded me now uh, another reason that it was it was really pulled back because there was large amounts of archival in that. Yeah, right. You had some restraints already. So imagine going from the, this archival, which was you know had already reached its peaks, well and truly, mm. and then you went into an interview and you went crazy. It just wouldn't work. Mm. It, it did feel very unified and very coherent in terms of matching, and I did want to make that comment with um, with the archival. You also had a, a bit of a big team. I, I saw in the credits you had oh, yeah. a couple of assistants and you had <clears throat> a conformer. And, Thank goodness, um, the team definitely helped with bringing everything else together, and and also of course you know spotting things you missed because there's so much stuff to get through, and and you go through, and they, and you, they just go, oh Vincent, that shot of the such as that you didn't grade that at all and I go oh so, so, <laughs> sorry um, you know but but be, look look definitely and and that that thing about the team and about the assistants and about the producers and you know this is preaching to the converted to everyone to you to everyone who's listening it's it's never just the colorist you know mm-hmm. ever um, it's 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 always going to be a, a team even if it's only a team of two even if it's only a team of you and your client it's always going to be a team 
So, um, uh, well, yeah, I, I, yeah, but, but even, you know, like that, that situation where, um, I was talking about before about that commercial where, um, the person said, no, no, this is the way I do it. I, you know, now if we weren't a team, I could have fought against that and I could have gone, right. well, no, I don't, you know, but you just go, all right. You know, you and and player. you know, so yeah, yeah, I guess I was, um, mm. but you know, it, so so there is always some form of teamwork happening. Yeah. Sometimes it's I- idyllic, other times it's challenging. But at the end of the day, hopefully, you're both trying to get that project out the door. And when you were working with your assistants on Tiger King, um, you were saying that they would sometimes say, "Hey, you missed a shot" or whatever. Um, was it useful for you, and did you utilize them as second eye? Hundred percent, yeah, and not, and it was never a spoken thing, uh, but it was definitely, uh, and because it was resolved, you know, there'd be flags in there or something like that, or sometimes it would just be stuff I didn't understand, you know, like I'd be looking at a shot and going, why, why does that not feel right, and and I just did not have time to break it down, analyse it, look at the source footage, see where it, you know. And also because I wasn't doing all the transcoding, I didn't know what the history of the shot was. So mm-hmm. so sometimes you just put a you'd be able to put a flag on and say something's not right here and you could leave it at that leave it at that. And and then you'd come back the next day and, and the flag would have changed colour, which meant yeah, fixed. Sometimes you'd uh, sometimes you'd ask or sometimes there'd be a note on there going, that's the best it's gonna get. Uh, uh, but yeah, there was always that, like just a daily thing, and it was it was really nice. It was so lovely to have that kind of relationship. Can you tell me if you have anything else exciting coming up? I, I said earlier on that you know I'm trying to make this transition back into a long form. So I've got I've got two long form projects coming up in this uh, uh, in this quarter in this next couple of months, uh, and they're both very very interesting and uh, both documentary actually. You love the range of characters in Tiger King, and and this is going to be a similar thing. Whether whether char- when I watched one of the first cuts, I just was just going, "Oh come on, this is not real." It's like the characters were so over the top, and then the subject matter is just insane. So yeah, it's it's a it's a project for Netflix, and uh, it'll come out later later this year. Well, thank you so much. Um, I will I will let you go. Um, but for Mixing Light, this has been Kaylee Bateman talking to Vincent Taylor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kaylee. <laughs>